I'd like to begin this video by sharing a quote from none other than Hidetaka Miyazaki. He spoke to CNET back in June 17th, 2024, and he had the following to say about Shadow of the Earth Tree's difficulty. For certain bosses, Miyazaki set the challenge target for players who have tackled a majority of the base game, which quote means we have kind of really pushed the envelope in terms of what we think can be withstood by the players. Of course, some bosses are a necessary part of the story development and arc, but some are not. The ones that aren't are especially difficult, I think will pose a very good challenge and obstacle for players. He warned us days beforehand that Shadow of the Earth Tree would be hard, even for veteran from soft Soulsborne players. And that is precisely what was delivered. In fact, that was delivered so well that Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree right now on Steam, if you look at the review score, it's hitting at a mixed score of 61%. And not because... Now, the thing with the review core, it is mixed. And I would have to agree that difficulty does have some... Uh, has some things to do with why people are having mixed receptions. But I really wouldn't be surprised if some of the mixed receptions are due to the performance, right? Because I've been like pretty much playing the DLC for the past uh, four days nonstop and I've just been MIA from the internet. And I've been having some performance issues with Elden Ring, which definitely brought my enjoy my enjoyment of the game down. It's nothing like detrimental for me, but when you add the difficulty of the game and then you add like frame drops, that can be very, very annoying, which can lead to people not enjoying themselves while playing the game. So if people have like that as a complaint, I would totally agree that, yeah, this game came out a little undercooked when it comes to performance. And I can understand why people the are having mixed DLC reviews. is bad, but mainly because people are finding the difficulty of this DLC, particularly where bosses and enemies are concerned, to be a bit too ridiculous. If you look at the reviews right now, a significant portion of them are positive, but looking at the negative ones, you can see that a lot of them talk about the leveling and scaling and uh, the bosses you fight and the kinds of attacks that they uh, chain and perform and how exceedingly frustrating it is. That's kind of the main complaint that you'll see from negative reviews uh, final boss in particular a lot of people are saying man what the hell incredibly tough right here we have an article from new salad forbes that kind of compiles some of the quotes we have seen from reviews saying things like the gameplay makes the game hard to recommend spastic bosses with jerky roll catch movements and a plethora of physically nonsensical moves make the bosses in this dlc hard to put up with as someone who beat all the FromSoft games with gimped level one characters for fun the base game included i'll be calling quits on this one, Miyazaki did say we're pushing the. I understand because like there, there's there are some bosses in the game that sometimes they feel a little unfair. Now, mind you, I'm not saying that they are unfair. I'm saying that they feel unfair, which is two different things. For example, um, the Saint Saint of the Bud that like um, Romania. Romania Saint of the Bud, the like centipede scorpion chick. I don't even know if she was a main boss or not. It is that like I ran into her and I was like, well, only one of us gets to leave this place alive. And after attempting her like a million times, it literally took me like two days to beat her. It was insane. It took so much time. Uh, I don't remember what I was talking about. But anyways, it took so much time for me to beat her. And honestly, sometimes like there, there's roll catching, right? It's like I would roll to dodge her animation but the second attack is going to be exactly where i land it's exactly when my iframes end and that felt a little unfair to me it's like this boss's attack even if you dodge through it perfectly you still get clipped by it it's the attack where she wraps herself up and then spins around eventually i did figure something around it However, it's like you really have to know or just stumble upon it before you before you can roll out of that attack without losing the distance you have on her because she's always trying to create distance between you and herself. Envelope, and I guess he really did. Uh, while the world design and colors are really beautiful and a lot of enemy designs too, there's a big problem with balancing. Right now, even with 60 Vigor, you get uh, by-shotted by nearly every enemy that's not pure fodder. 
I really wanted to like this DLC, but those enemies and boss fights are the worst parts of the whole game. I'm genuinely surprised whoever play tested this approved the Golden Hippo boss fight. Was able to beat it, but the bosses were so overtuned and aggressive that even being almost maxed out with the scattered tree fragments didn't make it any easier. I actually didn't really have that much of a hard time with the hippo. I mean, I did use my mimic because like from like I'll, I'll get into this a little bit later, but I do feel like you're really encouraged to use summons and to use your mimics because of how hyper aggressive the bosses are. And once I became OK with like, listen, I don't want to fight this boss for like the next three days of my actual life. Let me use the mimic, you know, let me use my mimic tier. And then as soon as I brought out, brought out my mimic tier, I don't I don't even think you can have summons in that fight. But as soon as I brought out my mimic tier, the fight became so easy just because the boss wasn't aggroed on me like 24-7. I feel like that's where a lot of the difficulty comes from. Because, like, again, the hardest boss I had so far, I'm still working on the DLC, I haven't finished it yet. The one I've had the hardest time with is definitely the Saint of the Bud, the, the Santipede Lady. And what makes her hard is that she's got an insane amount of range. She's constantly aggroed on you. And I think she can input read you too. It's like as soon as you're healing, she has this move where like she'll come in, swipe once from very far, and then swipe again while she's really close to you. If you're not healing, she'll just do the one swipe. If you heal after her first swipe, she will always do the second swipe. So if there is input reading, it definitely feels like there's some input reading there, which makes it even harder, which makes it a little bit more annoying. Uh, but again, same thing. I got, um, I got out a mimic tier at some point and the boss fight became kind of trivial. So look, I think people are allowed to have their opinions about this DLC. Uh, I think if you're frustrated by certain boss designs and the way they chain their attacks and whatever, that's your opinion to have. That's just not been my experience. If anything, I've been waiting for FromSoft to challenge me all over again. At this point, I've played so many FromSoft games and I've gotten so good at them that it's gotten rare for me to have a boss fight where I literally like I am shaking as I deplete the boss's final bits of health left. And when I do beat the boss, I literally jump out of my seat, trembling, screaming in joy, you know, unconsciously, just my body and my mind are so hyped about the victory that I've just achieved that I feel this overwhelming sense of joy and adrenaline that followed the hatred that I felt for the boss and the game. Like that to me is the quintessential from soft experience. And I've been getting that with this DLC. I agree. That's a hundred percent D like, um, that's the point of playing the from soft square, right? Uh, from soft square from soft games is that you keep throwing yourself at this boss over and over and over again. And like you try to figure its attack pattern. You try to feel like, okay, maybe I should parry instead. Maybe I should dodge instead. You know what? I've never used the shield before. Let me use shield. Let me use magic. Let me figure this out. And then eventually you get to the point where you just kind of lock in and you're able to beat that boss, which yes, I completely agree with. It's fantastic. However, if the learning process isn't fun, then I don't want to fight the boss. That's the issue. If it feels like it's unfair, I don't want to fight the boss. Like I tried to fight Bale, Belial, I can't, the, the, the dragon. I, I, I haven't beaten him yet, but I've, I think I've managed to do a total of like 200 damage on him because I went to the boss arena before I had, ca I, I, I think I got to his boss arena and I had only like gathered um, four scattered tree, uh, s scattered tree fragments. So I was like incredibly underleveled and I would get there and I would just be one shotted constantly. And I was like, okay, well, I'll come back to learn this. Uh, when I'm a bit higher leveled, but now I just think about how aggressive and how like quick his attacks are and I'm thinking of, like man Do I really want to throw myself at this boss for the next like couple of hours until I can learn every single attack pattern? Uh, perfectly because that's the thing with the DLC is that Some of the bosses are not that hard like the Saint Bud. She's not that hard of a boss It's just that if you make like a mistake one she'll then combo like four more attacks that you can't dodge out of 
and or like you get like staggered in in her animations and boom like you you're you're dead and like you're asking me to play perfectly for like a couple of minutes and that's not exactly an easy thing to do yes i can play perfectly and not get hit but i shouldn't be so brutally punished just for taking one hit if one hit takes a third of my uh, health away which i think is fair for a dlc boss but that attack will always set me up for two to three more hits and it's always my entire health bar even while wearing heavy armor and having 60 vigor that doesn't feel great to learn and uh, yeah there are moments where i'm like what the fuck but i miss that feeling um to give an example freaking renala i was having a really tough time with this boss battle for some reason you know this is essentially a knight mage kind of combo like boss battle and i you know i tend to be pretty good at those particular fights where it's just an enemy swinging swords around but just there's something about her attack patterns the range of her attacks and the way she weaves around the field that was just so difficult to wrap my head around and with my present build and level of scatter tree blessings uh i was just being one shot by some of her attacks which just made it very difficult to advance and so i decided to adjust my play style i decided to kill her by parrying her from beginning to end learn her attack so well that i could parry her attacks before she could start swinging around and that is, that is precisely what i did motherfuckers now like the thing with this is i think it's great that he felt good enough to completely change his build or change his play style to fight her which actually i think is one of the positive things of the dlc the dlc regularly encourages players to try out different builds because what worked in the base game definitely is not going to work in the dlc like when i finished the game i was playing kind of as a barbarian ish slash faith i was like kind of like a our barbaric paladin if you want to if you want to see it that way and it was a lot of fun but once i got and th this is the boss i had the hardest time with so it's the one i keep using when i got to the saint bud my build zero percent worked on her like zero percent whatsoever so i went back and i changed my build and i ended up doing like a frost monk instead with the hand-to-hand -hand, um weapon the hand-to-hand -hand combat which is probably the best for me it's the best weapon in the game the hand-to-hand -hand and the beast claws are definitely my favorite new additions to the game every time i want to respect or every time i want to try a new weapon if i feel like the game is punishing me for wanting to try Having to go back to the, um, the Forgotten Realm and then to use use the Larva Teos, which are a finite resource, I might add. If respecting didn't cost as much and could be done with a lot more ease, I think a lot more people would be open to going back and changing up their build. Because as of right now, if I don't have a Larval tier, I'm kind of stuck in the build that I'm at and I have to just... I just have to deal with it because not every weapon uh, scales with every single attribute. And yes, you can change the scaling properties of the weapon, but it still won't be as good as your maxed out plus 10 great sword uh, with your holy build. Like that, that's, that's where the issue comes in is that often it feels like the game is encouraging me to try out new things, but at the same time, it punishes me for trying new things by not giving me the necessary uh, upgrade materials to fully upgrade the character or fully upgrade the weapon that I want to try. I was so satisfied and so overjoyed by the fact that I managed to pull this off. Like I. I got so good at pairing in Sekiro, but pairing in sort of Dark Souls and Elden Ring, it, it's not as effective. But I decided, let's go back to Sekiro days. I hate, I hate, I hate the parry mechanic in Elden Ring. I much prefer Sekiro. I much rather tap to block and then I parry like that than to have a whole ass dedicated um, parry skill that doesn't come with the base shields. Like it's a skill you have to equip onto your shields. I'm not a fan of this ability whatsoever. I'm much rather the Sekiro, God of War. Just give me a regular parry. However, to be fair, there is a, um, a sacred tier. I think it's like Hardened, Hardened Crystal or Hardened Shield, something like that. It's for your, your, uh, your Wondrous Physique. 
the, that special flask that you mix. And basically, if you do a spontaneous guard and you drink that the uh, Rondo's physique, it will act like a perfect guard, basically, where you take zero damage and you take also zero stamina damage as well. So that kind of replaces the parry, but I still need to go test it out some more before I can give you guys a definitive answer. I don't think it does actual any stagger damage to the enemy. And try parrying out. And when I did accomplish that, it took, you know, a couple hours of really learning, well, like two hours of learning her attacks before I got really good at it. But once I got good at it, I felt like a freaking god. And there comes a point where you fought a boss so many times and where you've seen their attacks so many times where everything just kind of clicks. There comes that moment where you recognize that you are the one and you start seeing the freaking matrix. You understand everything that's happening in the boss battle. You understand every yeah. attack that's watched coming. The matrix last night. At that point, it just becomes about allowing your muscles to adapt to what you what your mind knows so that you can just perfect uh, your run and be able to just play this against this boss battle, be able to fight against this boss battle perfectly. And that's what happened with Renala. And when I, you know, beat her with bated breath, with that sliver of health left, having to be patient, wait for her attack so I can pair her before I go in for the final kill. Oh my God, like the, the feeling, I hadn't gotten that in, in, in a while. And I loved it. Uh, I hated it, don't get me wrong, for a bit because I, there, there came a point where, you know, I was this close and I, I my mind just goes into panic mode where I'm like, oh my God, I have this much health left and now I got to go in for the kill. But then I, that's when I fuck up the most. And so there were a couple times where I'm like, I, I had it. I, I, I just had to like do one more strike and she would have been dead. And then she killed me because I panicked. And so eventually I learned to relax when I have that sliver of health left. And, and I was in full control of that final run when I finally did beat her. And it was just the best feeling. And to me, I, I think that's what Miyazaki's trying to push the boundaries of because he knows players have gotten so good at his games that he needs to push the boundaries further to give them that feeling again. And I got that feeling again. So I, for one, am all about this. But I get that maybe not everyone is, but for those players, you know, there are ashes, the, you got the summons uh, that you can bring into the field, and there are uh, summons. Uh, I, before every major boss battle, I've seen essentially the golden signs on the floor that allows you to summon an NPC character to fight alongside you, and you can also summon an ash. So that can significantly lower the difficulty if you prefer. Just as a little, a little uh, side thing here, if you do use the golden summon signs that are outside the boss arena, the boss will behave as if there is a second player in the arena, which means the boss does more damage and has more health. So yes, they're making it a little bit easier, but at the same time, it kind of feels like you're being punished for asking the game to be easier by giving the boss a bigger health pool. And again, the Saint Bud, I think she's actually harder if you uh, summon someone because her attacks, like. I'd say like 90% of her attacks are AOE attacks. Some of them are single target, like maybe two of them are single target, but pretty much every single one of her attack is an AOE or like, or slash like very, very big cone type of ability. So whether or not she's targeting you or the summon, you're probably still getting hit. And the fact that she like she'll switch targets in the middle of her move set, like she like she has if she has like a three attack combo string, she'll change targets in that combo string. Sometimes it's way harder to dodge because you can't you can't tell the, uh, the you don't you can't see her tail as well because like her back is facing to you or she's on the side, so you can't you can't gauge if she's gonna attack you or the ally. And the next thing you know, you get slammed. So if anyone's having a hard time. My recommendation is enter the boss arena, summon some ashes, do not summon the uh, cooperative person because the boss fight does get harder. For to just kind of push along and not be, you know, a, a hardcore FromSoft player like me who like will not beat a major boss battle with a summon. Like I, I want to do it by myself and try and find myself. And that's what I ended up doing. And funny enough, I... I actually beat the se Renala, the second major boss, first before I beat the the Divine Dancing Lion Beast um, because he was just one-shotting me so much. 
And so I decided to like save that for later, explore, find a bunch of scatter tree fragments, and then beat the second boss first. I went back to the lion and he was still one-shotting me. So I decided to redo my build and I decided to put more points into vigor and decided to equip certain talismans that would uh, reduce the damage of some of his attacks. And once I like puzzle this out, I beat him a lot more easily. Um, and I, I fought him and if the battle felt a lot easier. So there's also that element of this game being so expansive in its freedom and in how you can build your character uh, that you can really, really kind of uh, figure things out as well. And kind of again, like the issue isn't me having to respect my character and try different weapons and try different tactics. It, the issue is that the, it feels like the game is punishing me for wanting to do that because I started the DLC. I think I had like 15 larval tiers and I was doing a lot of testing. So I had to do a lot of respect and I did mess up a few times because I realized that I needed like extra points in our Arca in Arcana. Like I needed like two points and I didn't do it uh, correctly, things like that. So I did waste a couple of larval tiers, but now I'm like at 10 larval tiers or nine larval tiers left. I've done like six respects so far because I'm wanting to try these different builds. And also the weapons that come with the DLC are a bunch of new weapons that I haven't tried out. So it's going to encourage me to respect my character more often. And Again, I think it's great that the game is encouraging people to try out different builds, try out different summons, and to try out different um, different weapons. It's just that I wish that I could buy Larval Tears. With the amount of runes that you collect from the DLC, and by the time you reach the DLC, you're already like at level 150. I play, I'm playing, I, I'm kind of a dumbass, and I played the DLC on New Game Plus 2 for the first time. Cause I didn't want to fight Moog. I did not want to fight Moog with my like level 50 character. <laughs> I, I did not want to go through that. Even with my character being level, like I think my character is level 218. And even with a character that's that high leveled and being able to pretty much equip every single weapon in the game, because I kind of leveled my character in a way where I could just equip whatever weapon I wanted to equip. Even with having that much degrees of freedom, it still wasn't enough because I just wasn't doing enough damage to any of the bosses. I was fighting this uh, this boss with the correct weapon and the correct attribute. I was doing like the most amount of damage possible and I was doing about 300 damage to this boss. I went back, I changed my build, dumped a bunch of bunch of my points into uh, strength and dexterity, and I switched and intelligence because I was switching to the frost fu uh, build, uh, like the frost uh, kung fu monk type of build, and I went from doing 300 damage to about 600 damage in like my first strike. And if I did a heavy attack, I was doing like 1,500 damage initially. If I had taken a flask of wondrous physique, increasing my strength, and I would roar to increase my strength, and I would do a jumping heavy attack, my would basically cap out at about a thousand, a thousand one hundred damage if I critted. And as soon as I switched my stats, I would cap out at about uh, fifteen hundred, almost sixteen hundred. So I don't really feel like that 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 boss fight would have been possible if I had not real allocated my stats because the amount of time I would have to play perfectly to be able to beat that boss just felt unobtainable, unobtainable. And I'm sure a lot of people feel that way as well. Kind of uh, put things into your advantage uh, or, or a little more advantageous uh, than uh, the battle would otherwise be. And so it's just that combination of like, you know, giving me that sense of you got to get good and you got to like do it over and over again until you start seeing the matrix combined with you got all this freedom to to be able to like play around with to make the battle a little easier to be able to tune things how you like and to be able to find the right build that's just right for this boss battle so i don't know i don't know about you but i i that's that's the experience i got and it gave me this great sense of satisfaction of like of like i did this you know and i i, I figure this out i got good I uh, use my, my knowledge and skills uh, to be able to uh, overcome this seemingly insurmountable wall. And if that's what Miyazaki was going for, for my part, I think he achieved it.
I, for one, am really happy with what this DLC has provided because it, for me personally, was exactly what I was looking for. As for what Miyazaki has said about the difficulty, he, in an interview, straight up said that he knows uh, the game is too difficult, but lowering the difficulty, in his opinion, would break the game itself. Speaking to The Guardian, he said, if we really wanted the whole world to play the game, we could just crank the difficulty down more and more. But that wasn't the right approach. Had we taken that approach, I don't think the game would have done what it did because the sense of achievement that players gain from overcoming these hurdles is such a fundamental part of the experience. I agree with this. I used to be very intimidated by FromSoft games before it finally clicked and I got into them. And yeah, I just thought like, why make it this hard? It's difficulty for the sake of difficulty. But once I understood the sense of fulfillment of like just trial and error until your brain adapts so well, like the the human capability, the brain's capability to adapt to situations is insane. And when you get to that level. I agree to a certain point that making the game too easy would break the game because the whole point of the from soft games is so that when you beat them, you feel like you've accomplished something that you you got through this challenge. That I can agree with, but like, I feel like they made the difficulty with the top 10% of players in mind, which I think is a little too much because think of the kind of person that is doing level one runs or no hit runs. That's not your average player. I think that the base Elden Ring game should have been made for the average Souls player, right? Soulsborn, what are you gonna call it? Soulsborn player. And then the DLC should have been made for like the top, top like 40% of players, not top like 10, 5% of players. Because that's what it feels like, honestly. It feels like they're like, let's make this DLC and we're going to make it so hard that only the best of the best are going to be able to enjoy it. I am far from being one of the best players. I'm nowhere near being like a top 10% player of uh, Elden Ring. I just have this uncanny ability to throw myself at a wall until the wall just gives up. Uh, I don't know. I used to smell a lot of glue when I was growing up, so that might have a factor in it, but I digress. Not everybody has that ability that I have. And also, I, I can also just like disconnect from the game mentally. I'm just like, oh, it's just a game. So I don't get angry playing these games until I do. Don't worry, I've never broken a screen controller, keyboard or anything like that. I just walk away. But even with the ability to just walk away and not like bring that, bring that heartache with me wherever I go, I still think it's a bit much. I still think it's a bit much. And I 100% I think the DLC is too hard. They should have made it for the top 40% of players, not the top 10% of players. This almost feels like top 5%, if I'm being completely honest. ...of almost being just like a freaking pro at each of these boss battles. It is such a good feeling. You'd feel so godlike, and not many games out there provide that sense. Uh, he says turning down the difficulty would strip the game of that joy, which in my eyes would break the game itself. Um, again, this is not necessarily for everyone. And that's okay, but it is for me, man. And I think it is also for a lot of people. I want to be pushed. I want to be challenged now that I'm so deep into these FromSoft games. Uh, so I, for one, like totally get what Miyazaki is going for with this game. But Miyazaki also highlighted that there are ways to make the game easier. If that's the approach you want to take, the amount of freedom that we've given players helps offset that difficulty curve and makes the game more accessible and engaging. If you want to go for that mage build who can Kamehameha his way through bosses uh, with uh, the combination of the physiques and the talismans that allow you to do a Kamehameha, for a while without wasting uh, mana or, or, or FP or whatever. Uh, like, you can do that. If you want to cheese your way through the game, you can do that. That's that's within your prerogative, and that's something you figured out. So that's still... I'm having a bit of a hard time with my computer right now. Sorry, guys. ...still a victory for you because you came up with this idea, and, you know, you executed on it, and you used the game's mechanics to overcome obstacles that the game set before you, seemingly insurmountable obstacles. But then there are those bosses that will just be pains in the freaking asses and you just have to get good at them. And that's what FromSoft games have been since the beginning. Uh, you know, that that's what what Soulsborne has been since Demon Souls, you know. And 
it's like, of course, they have to just up the ante with every new entry because, you know, players are just getting better. No, they don't. They don't have to up the ante with every entry. I don't think that's true. And the reason why I don't think that's true is because, like, you're basically raising the barrier to entry with every game. It's like with every game you guys make, the studio becomes more popular and the franchise and the genre of the souls like games becomes bigger and bigger. So, but you're making the barrier to entry higher and higher with every iteration. I don't think that's the best idea here. I don't think they should make the games easier. That's for sure. I think Elden Ring, yeah, was difficult, but there was a lot of options. You could just not fight the bosses immediately. You could go level up. You could have your ashes. You could summon people. Um, you, you had a lot, a lot of options in Elden Ring, which may, which could make the game easier. I, and I think it's a great model so far. And I really don't think that they should be like, oh, next game has to be harder than Elden Ring because people beat Elden Ring. No, I think Elden Ring was, was fantastic. I think the next game, whatever game they plan on making next, shouldn't be any harder than Elden Ring. I think I think that's perfectly fine when it comes to, in terms of difficulty. I would be interested in maybe seeing a different leveling system, maybe something different than the, the legacy system. But uh, no, I think the difficulty where it's at right now is perfectly fine. I still think the DLC is a little bit high and I hope that their future games are, are not any harder than they are right now and still have those easy mode options or even better yet and i know i'm gonna get flamed for this just a damage scaling mode or something like that it's like hey i want to fight these bosses i want them to be just as aggressive as they normally are and i just want them to do a little bit less damage or have a little bit less health you know like have a, a have an actual easy mode but that mode would simply reduce enemy attack and reduce enemy health no, no reduction of uh, aggression, no reduction, like, don't change the AI, you know, completely keep them the same. But like, instead of having uh, enemies, bosses being able to one shot you, like uh, the Saint Bud has this attack where she grabs you and pretty much regardless of how much health you have, it's a one shot. It's an immediate one shot kill. Have that attack do like 75% of my health instead of 100% of my health. Because when you get caught by that attack and there's like only a sliver of health left for the boss and you get caught and, you, and like you're at full HP, you got 10 flasks left and you immediately die. That is insanely, insanely aggravating. I'm better, I'm better. But Elden Ring more than any other FromSoft game lets you kind of go crazy and experiment and do things that you know, might break the game and might allow you to just breeze through it. But hey, if you figured it out, then that's your victory. So yeah, look, Miyazaki, he's a sadistic son of a gun, but he he is creating a very specific type of experience. And I, I can respect that personally. And he's exactly appealing to what I want um, from j new entries and new additions to the From Soft array of games and DLCs. Um, this is the guy who, when it comes to freaking poison swamps areas in Elden Ring, he said, I might have gotten a little too far with, with the base game. So instead, for Shadow of the Earth Tree, he imagined... I'm happy there isn't like a billion poison swamps this time around. I'm kind of tired of the poison swamps. There's a couple of Scarlet Rock places, but they're not that bad. And I'm having uh, some issues with the my recording, so I'm gonna end, I'm gonna stop reacting to this. I just have a couple of uh, few things to say before I end off the video. The leveling system. The scatter tree fragment system, uh, it's not bad per se, but I'm not really crazy about it. Like getting to places and being one shotted, regardless of what your armor is, regardless of how much health you have, or what weapons you're using, what talismans you're, you're using, doesn't feel good because I don't have enough scattered tree fragments. Like I, I got th that feels unfair. So like I get to the boss, I have good armor, I'm playing well, but it doesn't matter. I get hit once, I immediately die just because I don't have enough scattered tree fragments that I'm not super crazy about. 
I think um, maybe something along the lines of Sekiro could have done well. Like you beat the boss, you collect their memories, which gives you more strength. Or um, you can enter the base game and you have, you can collect runes, but the runes are only like, they're like shadow runes, you know, because you have those shadow sh uh, shadow runes that you can collect. Have those shadow runes be a completely new leveling system uh, that your weapons scale with and that your life, uh, your life scales with. Uh, I know it's not the best idea, it's just a quick idea I came up with right now. And uh, yeah, man, those are my thoughts on the Elden Ring DLC. I still haven't finished it. I'll be finishing it hopefully this week, and I will uh, give you guys my thoughts on that. That's where we're going to be ending today's video, guys. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, don't forget to hit that subscribe button because we're trying to hit 300 subs before the end of the month. we got a couple of days left. Hopefully, we're going to make it. Uh, if you don't want to help, well, remember, at the end of the day, I'm just some guy on the internet, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. If you want to see more of my face, be sure you click the video you see on screen right now.